Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be working with a function. We have f of n equals 3n squared minus 3n plus 1, and we're supposed to evaluate f of 1 plus f of 2 plus so on and so forth, all the way up to and including f of 10. So we're going to find a, a sum with 10 terms, and I'll be presenting at least two methods. So let's start with the first one. For my first method, obviously, I can write this using the sigma notation, can't I? So in other words, I'm trying to look for the sum of f of n, where n goes from 1 to 10. And then f of n can be replaced with 3n squared minus 3n plus 1. So this is the sum I'm looking for, right, using sigma notation. And then sigma notation allows us to separate these, so we can kind of write it as... 1 through 10, 3n squared minus 1 through 10, 3n plus 1 through 10, 1. And then using each of the properties of sigma, first of all, we can go ahead and take these numbers out. So we're going to get 3 times sigma n squared minus 3 times sigma 1 through 10, n. And finally, 1 through 10, and that's just 10, because you're basically writing the 1 10 times and add, which means 10 times 1. So we have a formula for each one of these. For example, the sum of squares, the consecutive squares, is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. But of course, you have to evaluate this at n equals 10. And then, same thing here, we have a formula n times n plus 1 divide by 2 at n equals 10 plus 10. And then we're going to go ahead and plug it in, but let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. If you replace n with 10, you're going to get 10 times 11 times 21 divide by 2. Of course, this is going to simplify. Minus 3 times, the 3 cancelled out, remember? We don't need have that anymore. 3 times 10 times 11 divided by 2. Again, we can kind of cross cancel here, plus 10. And now we have 55 times 21 minus 55 times 3, which might help a little bit, plus 10. So I'm going to go ahead and take out a 55 here, which is 55 times 21 minus 3 is equal to 18. And now to find this, I'm going to do the following. This is a really good strategy, especially if your numbers end in 0 or 5. You can kind of double this number and cut this in half, and the product is not going to change. So this is 990 plus 10 is... A thousand. Wow, that's a, such a nice answer, isn't it? Yes. And this is just the first method, right? So we plug it in, use the formula for n squared and n for the constant, and then put it all together. Do it carefully. Do not make silly mistakes. Okay? So far, so good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. Obviously, there's a third method too, which we'll talk about later. So for the second method, we're going to use something much, much smarter. That's actually the purpose of this problem, because this problem probably appeared on a math contest. So the idea here is to see if students can uh, notice the pattern. And what is that pattern? The pattern is about cubes. If you are familiar with formulas such as n plus 1 cubed and n minus 1 cubed. Let's go ahead and expand them. The first one from binomial theorem is n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. The second one is n cubed minus 3n squared plus 3n minus 1. Now, which one of these do you think will be more helpful for us? Yes, the second one, because the second one actually has a plus minus sign, so it's kind of alternating, and it fits this pattern more. I don't think we're going to use this, but again, that's just a formula. Now, how do I use it, though? I do have an expression like this, but I don't have n cubed. Guess what? We can do the following. Since n minus 1 cubed is equal to n cubed minus that, we can go ahead and bring the n minus cubed here and bring send everything else over there uh, to the right-hand side, I mean to the left-hand side, so it's going to become like this. In other words, if you subtract n minus 1 cubed from n cubed, you're going to be subtracting n cubed minus n cubed minus 3n squared plus 3n minus 1. Everything inside the parentheses will be negated, and we're going to get what we want, right? Awesome. n cubed cancels out, and this is the very expression that we have. 
So our expression is the same as difference of two cubes, not just any two cubes, but consecutive cubes. Nice, because now we can go ahead and write this sum one through 10 of three n squared minus three n plus one as what? n cubed minus n minus one cubed. And of course, this will be one through 10 again. And using properties of sigma, we can go ahead and separate these expressions and write it with two sigmas. n equals one through 10, n cubed minus n equals one through 10, n minus one cubed. And then expand a little bit to see what it's gonna look like. You could also do this, but this is a telescoping sum, such a nice word, right? It means a lot of terms are gonna cancel out, but if you expand the first one, you're gonna get one cubed, two cubed, all the way up to nine cubed and then 10 cubed. The second one is gonna start at zero cubed because n equals one is the first value, but that's not gonna matter. One cubed all the way up to nine cubed. It's gonna end at nine cubed because for n equals 10, we get nine inside the parentheses. And guess what happens? One cubed through nine cubed cancels out everything. We end up with zero, it doesn't matter. The answer is 10 cubed, which is, guess what? 1,000, yay! That is the answer. Such a nice answer, right? From a quadratic equation like this. Yes, so it kind of confirms what we found with the first method. Uh, so it's kind of like a nice way to check it, all right? So let's go ahead and see if we can do it the, using a third method. Do you, can you think of one? Like, how would you solve a problem like this with the third method? You're not allowed to use any of the methods that I used, and you're supposed to evaluate this sum right well the third method the third method is called brute force and brute force means you're just gonna do it the hardest way possible right so in other words you're gonna find f of one f of one is equal to three minus three plus one that would be one f of two would be three times four which is 12 minus three times two six plus one that would be a seven and then f of three, see if you can see a pattern here. Three times nine, that's gonna be 27, minus three times three is gonna be a nine plus one, that's 19. Do you see a pattern? It uh, goes up by six and then by 12. You get the idea? f of four is just gonna be four squared, 16, 48, minus three times four is equal to 12 plus one, that's gonna be 37. Now take a look at it. This is plus six, this is plus 12, this is plus 18. Yes, that is correct. If you said, the second differences are constant. You got it because this is quadratic. So you can kind of find out the pattern and add them that way. Of course, it's only 10 terms. Even if you found each one individually, it's not gonna be a big deal. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Wait a minute, Wolfram Alpha has an answer for us, yay. Adding them discreetly, you're gonna get 1,000. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.